Okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum again. Uh, let's begin the lecture. Uh, so we, we don't wait any longer. Uh, last lecture, if you remember, we talked about moments where the moment is, uh, it's uh, the expected value of a function uh, of the random variable. So, uh, we t for, you know, the, the lecture before we talked about expectation value, the expected value or the, uh, the average or the, the mean, which was the, uh, where this one here, it's the same thing, but this is the expected value of, the, of a function of the random variable, okay? And uh, we, we talked about how we find the random variable, the mean, uh, about the origin and also about the mean. So about the origin as shown in this example and this uh, equation right here where you take the integration from minus infinity to infinity uh, over uh, x to the power n times the PDF of the random variable x in this case. Okay, and we had a few examples and also we, we talked about the central moment central moments, which is basically, it's the, the moment about the mean. It's the same thing as before. The only thing is uh, n or x is shifted to the right by the, the mean, okay? So in the, the first time the mean is zero, where the mean here is where x is shifted to the right by the mean, okay? And also from there, uh, we mentioned that uh, you know the, the the most important the the most important moments the first moment and the second moment where the the first moment is uh, it's talking about the average of the for the random variable where the second moment is talking about the variance and both these comments are uh, these uh, uh, mathematical uh, identities are uh, common to us okay so today. Of course, we had a couple more examples or a couple more things. We talked about Mark Hobbs and uh, 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 Shave uh, inequalities. Okay, so today we're going to continue talking about uh, moments, but in a different way. So, like I said, moments can be found in these two ways. Okay, or at least this is the the original one, and then the other one is shifted to the right. Where now we have another way to find the moments. We're going to use some mathematical uh, equations or mathematical identities. It, the first one is characteristic function, and the other one is moment generation function. So we're going to use these to find the moments uh, for random variables. So the first thing we do, we find the, the characteristic function uh, for a random variable. And then once we find the characteristic function, uh, from there we can find the moments for it. So it's, uh, it's another way to find the moments, OK? So let's begin here on this page here uh, on the screen, as you can see. Uh, the characteristic function of uh, random variable x is given by this equation, which is basically it's uh, uh, phi of w, okay? It's uh, the, the integration uh, of the, the PDF of the random variable, okay? Assuming that the random variable here is x, so it will be the, uh, the PDF for that random variable x times the exponential of j omega x, okay? And the integration limitation from minus infinity to infinity, okay? Now, if you, if you go back to previous courses like maybe uh, uh, signals and systems, you did, uh, you did see the Fourier transform, okay? So now, if you go back, the Fourier transform, the difference between this one and this one is just the uh, the, the sign, the sign of omega, or the sign of the W right here, okay? So this is equation two here. That's how you find, uh, how, that's how you find the, uh, the Fourier transform uh, for, uh, of the PDF. Where here, that's how we find the characteristic function. It's the same thing as you can see here. The only, so if you, if you already know that, uh, the 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 Fourier transform of uh, of the PDF. Then all you have to do is just multiply it or uh, multiply omega by by x as, as shown in equation two. And of course j, uh, we all uh, we all know j. J is the 
imaginary operator, which is equal to square root of minus one, okay? So that's basically what that characteristic function is, okay? Now, uh, now if we need to find the PDF of the characteristic function, let's say you already have the characteristic function and you need to find the PDF, all you have to do is just take the inverse. And it's the same thing, like, you know, if you remember, uh, we can find the PDF from the uh, Fourier transform. Okay, it's the same thing here. Okay, so you just take the, the characteristic function times uh, the exponential minus j omega x uh, integration from minus infinity to infinity, and you divide by 2 pi. Okay, so for us here, equation one is the most important one. Okay, this is that's how we, we're going to find the characteristic function for a random variable. Okay. Okay. Let's take the first example on page two right here. Let's suppose X is an exponential random variable with a PDF. It's given uh, in the form of exponential X to the power minus X times uh, the unit step uh, function U of X. So it means this uh, PDF is uh, from, uh, of course, from, uh, you know, anything less than, uh, when X is less than zero, it's gonna be zero. Okay, so we need to find the characteristic function for it. So since we have the unit, the unit step function, all we have to do, we go back to this equation, equation one, and plug in uh, the PDF here, and also times the exponential of j omega x. Okay, and of course, uh, instead of minus infinity, we just put zero since we have the unit step function, and we just do the integration. We all know how to do the integration, okay? It's very straightforward, okay? Like, like I mentioned before, you need to know how to do the integration uh, and, and differentiation for the exponential, uh, cosine and sine, and also, uh, uh, also you need to know how to do integration by parts. So uh, at least refresh your memory. I'm sure you've done it before. And we had uh, lots of examples so far on, 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 on these topics. After you do the integration as shown here on uh, on this page, equation four, the end result is going to be one over uh, one minus j omega. Okay. Now this is the characteristic function. Now the uh, if somebody would ask you how uh, this is the characteristic function, how you find the Fourier transform, all you have to do is just replace this uh, the minus sign with positive, and that will give you the Fourier transform. Okay. Uh, another example, example two. Uh, <clears throat> we are given this uh, PDF, the same thing. PD, uh, it's if, when you, when you com compare this PDF with the first example, they are the same thing, but this PDF is multiplied by a, and also uh, x here or y multiply, uh, multiplied by a. So there's uh, you know, it's the same thing, and also it's it's uh, uh, multiplied by unit step function of y. Okay, so of course in this case a will have to be positive, of course. Otherwise, uh, as as we know, the one of the properties for the PDF it will have to be positive. Okay. So as you can see here, if, like I said, if we compare this uh, this function, uh, the f(x) the fy, uh, uh, the only difference is you multiply x here by a, okay? So if you multiply x here by a, and of course, uh, a is outside here, and you would end up with the same thing. So we can use, if we if you go back to the, uh, the properties of Fourier transform, something it's called the scaling property. These are one of the properties you learned uh, back in uh, when he took two, uh, AE 260 or uh, signals and, and systems. So in this case, you can use this property the same way. All you have to do is you take this one, okay, since we already have the characteristic function for it, and we divide omega by C, as you can see here. And this will, will, uh, will make up for the, uh, the, the scaling. 
So we scale this one, we multiply it by A, we multiply X by A here. So since we already have this one, instead of doing the integration again, all you have to do, just say omega over C, okay, divide by absolute value of C. So after you plug in the, uh, the number, the, this equation, equation four in here, okay, you will end up with uh, A divided by A minus J omega, okay, as you can see here. Now, if you want to verify this, you know, if you're not really sure about the scaling property or you forgot about it, you know, you say, well, yes, maybe I'm not really sure if it's divided by C or multiplied by C or something like that. Say, well, I want to verify it. All you have to do is just go back to the uh, uh, to the original equation, equation one, right here, and just apply the uh, the integration. So the scaling fact, uh, the scaling property here is just to help you in case if somebody will say, you know, this is the characteristic function of x, okay, and uh, uh, I want you to find this the characteristic function of this PDF, okay. So I would say, well, I don't want to do the integration again. All you have to do is just uh, use the scaling uh, property if you know about it, okay? Otherwise, you just use the integration and you would end up with the same results as you can see here, okay? So equation seven right here, it will give you the same result. So uh, just just in case, I would I recommend that you go back and uh, review the scaling and the shifting property as well, okay? This is the shifting property. So if T is shifted to the uh, left by B, or to the right by B, okay? So the integration, uh, the, the shifting property, all you have to do is just multiply, uh, multiply the, uh, the, the characteristic function or the, the random, or the Fourier transform in this case by the exponential minus J omega B. Again, uh, would be nice if you can go back to, uh, you know, old notes of the EE260 signals and systems and uh, refresh your memory about the uh, scaling and shifting. Or, like I said, you always can do this, okay? Now, so far, what we did, we learned how to find the characteristic equation, uh, the characteristic function uh, of a uh, a random variable. So once you have the characteristic function, let's say this one here in four or in seven, okay, now, okay, I need to find the moments. So now we go to page three here, and we need, the, uh, we can find the nth moment by using equation eight. So the, the expected value for the nth moment uh, uh, of the random variable x uh, the notation will be M subscript N, which is equal to uh, minus J, which is the uh, imaginary operator, to the power N, okay, times the, the nth derivative of the characteristic function divided by, uh, with respect to the uh, uh, D omega N. So depending, and after that you will set omega to equal to zero, okay. So the derivation will be depending on how many the moments you want. So the first one, if, if, you, if you are looking for the first moment, of course, in this case, n will be one, okay, in, you know, in equation eight, okay. And then what you can do is just take the, the, the you derive, or you take the first derivative of the, uh, the characteristic function with respect to, the, uh, to uh, omega, and then you set omega, omega to zero. If you need, um, if you need to find the second moment, you do the same thing, but you have to do that derivation, uh, that uh, derivation here twice. The first time for the uh, first moment, the second time for the second moment, the third time for the third moment, and so on and so forth. So, I hope this one is clear. This is so. So far, we have two equations that they are re really important. In this equation uh, in this. Uh, uh, lecture, the first equation, how to find the characteristic function, and how you use the characteristic, uh, the characteristic function to find the nth moment. So, for example, if you go back to example two, where we found the characteristic function, which is uh, a divided by a minus j omega, now I need to find the first derivative. 
Okay, so how are we going to do that? Like I said, the first thing you do, you find, uh, uh, we need to find the first moment, sorry. We need to find the first moment for it. Uh, so the first thing, you take the first derivative of the characteristic function, and we know how to take that, to do that. It's very straightforward, okay? Uh, equation 9 details that for you. So 0 times a minus j omega minus, because this is the numerator, times the denom uh, divide by denominator, uh, denominator. So this is a constant, so there'll be the first one, 0, and so on. So you know how to do that. So nothing new to you. So after you take the first derivative, it's going to be the result of equation 9 is j a divided by a minus j omega uh, squared. Okay. Fine. Then we go back to equation 8. And of course, we, we are looking for the first moment. So in this case, uh, n will be equal to 1. So we have to multiply this by minus j. Of course, minus j times j is equal 1. Why? Because j itself is, is equal to the square root of minus 1. So uh, we have minus j times j. So uh, j times j will be minus 1. And uh, the minus will be equal to 1. OK. And as as you can see here, and of course, after after you do that, you have to set omega to equal to zero. OK. So after you set uh, the, 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 you know, the, the end result here to equal to zero, J here, J omega is going to be going to go away. You will end up with this. You multiply by J and that's equation 10. So the first moment here is equal to 1 over a. Okay. Now, if somebody want to verify this, say, well, I'm not really sure if I, you know, if I understand this or if I want to do this. Well, uh, of course, we have another way to do it. Okay. Uh, by going back to uh, the uh, last lecture where we, we had to do it. So it's, as you can see here, it's in the square. So you plug in the uh, you go back to, let's say, last page. OK, you take the PDF right here and uh, you multiply PDF by. You multiply by uh, PDF by what? By Y. As you can see here, and then. And this is, uh, and you do the integration by parts. And of course, you will end up with the same results. So of course, integration by parts is doable. Like I said, you should you should know how to do it. Okay. Just give me one minute, okay, if you will. OK, uh, like I said, so uh, if, if you, of course, if you find the characteristic function and you use equation 8, you will end up with this equation, 1 over 8. This is the first moment. Or, like I said, you can go back to the uh, original equation of last lecture, and you just do integration by parts for this equation right here, OK, for this integration. And, of course, you will end up with the same thing. So either way, you will have to do some integration, but you will avoid the integration by parts if you want. So but both ways will give you the same answer. Now, if I want to find the second moment, OK, we did find the second moment, the first moment here. In order for us to find the second moment for the same example, OK, we will have to do the uh, differentiation twice. So we already differentiated here, for example. This is the first derivative. Now we're going to do the second derivative for this one here, OK, the second time. And after you do this, so the derivative of this result, OK, it's going to be equal to minus 2 a divided by a minus j omega to the power 3. OK. 
And of course, you will set uh, N in here, 2, 2, right? And then you multiply by the, the result of the second, uh, the second derivative, and you will set omega 2, 0. Of course, here, this is going to go to 0. And also here, minus J squared, minus J squared is going to be equal to minus 1, right? And we have here minus, so minus 1 times minus, it's going to be 2a. So the end result will be 2a divided by a squared, uh, a to the power 3. And the end result will be 2 uh, divided by a squared. Okay, so that's how you find the moment using the characteristic function approach. Okay. Now let's go to... Uh, the second part of the lecture, where we have yet another example. Okay. Uh, this example, uh, it's given us uh, uh, this uh, PDF. Okay. And we need to find the first moment by using the characteristic function approach. Okay. And of course, again, we go back to last lecture, and this is the Uh, this is the equation we use. Okay, we plug in the PDF and we'll multiply by the exponential of j omega x. Okay. So, of course, here, as you can see here, the limitation, it's, uh, we have this function here, uh, the PDF, this function here where x larger than a, and if x is less than a, uh, the PDF will be zero which means that the integration was going to be from a to, to 8, uh, from a to infinity instead of 0, because, you know, anything less than a will be 0. So the integration will be from a to 0 and multiplied by the exponential of j omega x. So we all know how to do all the, this integration. It's very straightforward again. It's all exponentials. Okay. After all you do that, so equation 13 is showing the characteristic function. Okay. Now, once we find the characteristic function, what do we have to do? We, we find the first derivative of equation 13, like we just did before. Okay, nothing to it. We know how to do the, uh, the uh, derivative uh, for the, the, uh, the exponential. So, as you can see here, all we, now all we have to do, we just set <clears throat> n in this equation right here. one equation eight right here and we, we uh, and then we set omega to zero after that of course after we set <coughs> omega to zero as you can see in here if you take a look at this uh, this is a, a big uh, uh, equation or result for the derivative so you can you can set omega to zero right away so this is going to be one right here this is going to be uh, zero, of course, so you'll end up with one. So the end result here is j omega, okay? And also here, the same thing. Uh, the same thing, this is going to be minus, minus one because uh, the exponential of zero is one. So this is, again, it's going to be j. So you, you're going to multiply by j. So j, uh, j times minus j is going to be equal to 1. And of course, this is 1. So the end result is going to be a plus b. a plus b. Okay? Right? Because this is negative. So negative with, with uh, uh, negative j, sorry, negative j times j is going to be give you a. And negative j times j, because this is negative and negative, negative j times j will give you also 1. So that would be a plus b. And again, if you decided to do it by the old results, you will end up with the same, uh, you know, the same, the, the same uh, equation 40. So this is the end. This is uh, example for the end of uh, the uh, topic about the characteristic function. Now, 
in addition to the characteristic function, we have <clears throat> another function or mathematical function that can be used to find the moment. It's called moment generating function. It's basically the same thing. Okay. Uh, the moment generating function, uh, the notation here, it's uh, mx of uh, v, mx of v, okay, which is the expected value of the exponential v of x. Now, if you go back to compare to the characteristic function, let's go back here. <clears throat> okay, compare this one with this one. The only difference is v is equal minus j, uh, v is equal to j omega. Okay, sorry, right here. j omega, we replace j omega with h v. So the uh, imaginary operator is no longer available here. Okay, that's the difference between the moment generating function approach and their characteristic function. Otherwise, everything is the same. You have the, uh, the PDF uh, for the random variable, multiply the PDF by the exponential of Vx, okay? And then, uh, and uh, the moment is, is defined right here, okay? So since we have we don't have j, if you go back here, so this is the how you find the nth moment minus j to the power n since j is gone. So this one is not there. So the only thing we replace the exp the characteristic function with the moment generating function as shown here. And also again you set v to equal to zero. So if you understand the characteristic function, you can find uh, the moment generating function right away. And if somebody has the characteristic function and somebody say, I need to find the moment generating function, all you have to do, to do just replace J omega with V, okay? And you all set. But on some books, they use uh, U instead of V, okay? Uh, so it doesn't matter what you use as long as you define it correctly, okay? So these are the two important uh, example uh, equations 15 and 16 re related to the moment generate uh, related to the moment generating function okay so let's repeat example four the one we just did here so we did this example using the uh, characteristic function now we're going to use it by using the gener uh, moment generating function the same thing you just plug in like i just said uh, of course, the integration going to be from minus uh, from a to infinity, and uh, as you can see here, uh, you plug in the uh, the PDF times the exponential v of x, and you do the integration like we did, and the end result is equation 18. Now, if you compare equation 18 with equation uh, where is equation equation 13, the only difference is j omega is V. So if we take this one, the exponential of VA, now the exponential of VA divide by one minus VB. Is that correct? Right here. It's the same thing, VA and VB. Now we take the, uh, the moment generating function and plug it into equation 16. So we take, uh, if we need to find the first moment, all we have to do is uh, you, ta uh, you take the, fir uh, the first derivative like we did with the characteristic function and plug it in here and you set b to zero and we'll end up with the same result a plus b. Okay. Now, uh, equation six or example six on page three here. Uh, we need to find, of course, uh, we are given a PDF. It's the same type of uh, PDF. We, we've seen it before a minute ago uh, in this lecture, of course. Uh, but we need to find the variance. Now, if you go back to the uh, last lecture, OK, let's go back to last lecture. And let's find out what the variance is all about. The variance is equal to the, the second moment minus the mean squared. 
the second moment minus the mean square. So which means we need to find the second moment and also we need to find the first moment in order for us to answer this question, right? <clears throat> so we need to find, uh, of course, uh, we can use the characteristic function also. We can use, uh, in, in this case, we need to find, find them, uh, use it, use the moment generating function. So again, you just plug it in like this, equation 20, and you do the integration, and the end result is going to be A divided by A minus B. And by the way, uh, the moment generating function is, is similar uh, to the uh, Laplace transform, the, the, the Laplace transform page, uh, I guess, the, uh, in, EE, in EE260. So, for the characteristic function, it's similar to the Fourier transforms. The only difference is the signal is reverse. Yani, but then it could negative, still positive, or relax. The same thing here. Uh, the moment generator function is Laplace transform with the signal is reverse, okay? Or the sign of when the sign is reverse, okay? So in here, if you need to find the, uh, the Laplace transform uh, of this one right here, so this is the moment generator function, so you reverse the sign, it's going to be positive, and that would be your ish Laplace transform. All right, so now we have uh, we have the moment generator function here. So we need to find uh, the first moment. OK, so we plug in the uh, we use this equation right here. Go back to equation 16 and plug in the, uh, the, the result. Of equation 20. And you would end up with equation 22, which is one over a and then you take uh, the derivative again of equation 21, so you uh, so we can find the second moment, okay? And the end result of 22 will be 2a divided by a minus b squared, okay? Okay, so the second moment is going to be 2 over a squared. So now we have the first moment, which is in equation 21, 1 over a, and the second moment is 2 over a squared. And we use this equation, the one we just talked about last lecture, this equation, equation eight. And, and this is the second moment from equation 22 minus one over a squared. And the end result one will be one over a squared. Okay. So if you want to verify this, you can go back to uh, last lecture and you find the moments by yourself without, you know, by, without using the moment generator function and you should end up with the same results. So this is the end of today's lecture. So today we introduced the characteristic function. And also we introduced the uh, moment generator function where we can find. You know, these are just mathematical tools uh, to find the. Uh, uh, to find the moments, OK? And uh, of course, you know, last lecture we learned how to find the moment directly by doing integration, but sometimes integration will be uh, somewhat uh, uneasy to deal with, OK? So sometimes if you already have the characteristic function or you have the, uh, the moment generator function, you don't have to do any integration. All you have to do, maybe you have to do a derivative or two, and then uh, you will find the, uh, the moment that you are looking for, either the first or the second, OK? Uh, any questions on uh, today's lecture? No, doctor. Okay. If you didn't have any questions, uh, 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 we'll see you on the third day. Inshallah, by Allah, we'll see you on the third day. Chapter three. Uh, and the day of the week, of course, we'll start with chapter four, but the exam will be just up to chapter three. Meaning, chapter four, we won't enter the exam. اوكي واذا ما في عندكم اي اسئله يعطيكم الف عافيه او تاكتيو اون تيوزدي ان شاء الله يعطيك العافيه دكتور اوكي باي باي